Hey, this could be basketball heaven around here this uh, this year. Fresh off the ranking UC number two in the country, Street and Smith, the basketball Bible, has now ranked Northern Kentucky U number one in the country over Fort Hayes, who beat them for the national title last year. That is a serious ranking. To baseball. UC expected to do great things on the basketball court this year. Xavier thought to be much improved in their second year in the Atlantic 10. And then there is NKU, who many say are a good bet to return to the Division II championship game. In other words, the Norse a force to reckon with. Tonight they hosted athletes in action in an exhibition game. Scott Stewart, three. NKU looked to their big men, Cliff Clinton, taking a breather from the campaign trail, benefiting from a second effort. Paul Cluxton took target practice from long range. NKU, however, falls three shy of victory. The Cyclones have hit their first funk of the you know. Season squad. BUU fans all fired up. Perry Morris, he had 10 points tonight. Panthers lead by five. Northern Kentucky, though, LaRon Moore with a great move. He had 19 to lead their, lead their scores. Calvin Slayton, a piece of the ball. Lorenzo Roach off to the races. It was uh, one point lead for Northern Kentucky at the half. Show you the score in a little bit. Virginia, VCU hosting Yugoslavia. It's 91 to 74. One other hoop score from our area, NKU, beats Virginia Union 83 to 66. Today brought more than just. In college basketball, NKU wins the tip off classic, beating Washburn 66 to 63 in overtime. Weekend for tri-state teams. Turpin won a state soccer championship. Seton and St. Ursula brought home volleyball titles. That's the Bulldogs' fourth straight. And Northern Kentucky won the first ever Division II National Tip-Off Classic Basketball Championship in Richmond, Virginia. They beat Washburn, Kansas 69-63 in overtime yesterday. Fans were on hand for their return today with the championship trophy. Ken Shields Norris were rated third in division in preseason. They could climb when that poll is released tomorrow. The first Associated Press College basketball poll is out at 6. Cohesive yet. I got a feeling they'll be there. When I'm sure they, they will be. Mm -hmm. Still more in this half hour coming up. The man who shaved his head and pierced his ear for his basketball team. Not Dennis Rodman. He dyed his <laughs> hair and pierced everything else. <laughs> yeah. We mean NKU coach Ken Shields. Could this be the year his Norse take it all? If it happens, what will Ken do next? Uh, our hoop special continues right after this. The Clever Idea people from Plymouth are at it again with another clever idea. Intimidate, dominate, celebrate. You see basketball on Fox 19. Coming up, still ahead tonight as well, our half-hour look at UC, the top-ranked team in the nation. But first, we look at Northern Kentucky, a team rising on the local and national horizon. Last year, Kenny Shields led the Norse to the Division II championship game. This year, they are picked number two in the nation behind Fort Hayes State. Andy Trinan visited with the Norse. Fred Cash put it together. Enjoy it and stay with us. Our half-hour special on the Bearcats is coming up. Check this out. So right now we're the hunted. You know, in recent years we 
you go out there and, and hunt everybody else down. But now, every team, our, uh, our school schedule uh, is circled on their schedule. Newspaper article which they had Laurent's uh, picture on there, colored next to it. This is a good basketball team, but we got a, a tough schedule. And we're still coming along, and, and it's too early to judge. This team's got a lot of heart and a lot of unselfishness. They play off each other very well, and we've got quite a bit of talent, too. So, you know, it's still early, too early to call, but uh, in general, we couldn't be any better than 3 and as we are right now. Fourth, NKU coach Kenny Shields all smiles today at the annual NKU tip-off luncheon. His team just returned from Richmond, Virginia, where they won the Division II National Tip-Off Classic. Not a surprising start for a team that was just one win away from a national title last year and maybe doing it this year. You know, we feel like after last year coming so close, if we can position ourselves to make a run, who knows, maybe this could be the year for Norse to win the national championship. Back to work after a... Charges of shoplifting. Well, the first preseason poll has NKU at number one in the country. The coaches poll has the Norse at number two. The ladies are picked to finish third, and both teams gathered for the Norse luncheon today. The men were the national runner-ups last year. They plan to take it at least one step further this time around. I think that you work that much more harder because you want to get back to that point. And I know we're going to get back there and try to win the national championship. National letter of intent for high schoolers. Island Heights through the doors of Regents Hall. Dee Lynham has more. This was the scene last March when the Norse had just played Fort Hayes State in the Division II NCAA championship game. Fort Hayes State was celebrating and KU was runner-up. In the fall of 1996, the Norse were ranked number one in the country before they had ever played a game. That's when they took a trip to the tip-off classic. The fact that we had such success uh, in Richmond, Virginia, winning those three games, beating the number 18, the number 5, and the number 3 team in the nation, and coming back as champions was special. Tomorrow night, Norse fans get to see what the hype is about. NKU is hosting the John L. Griffin's Lions Club Tournament. They play Ashland in their first home game of this young season. Now, we will have been off almost 11 days, and that concerns me a little bit uh, because of being off that period of time. We might be a little rusty. It, I mean, that long of a layoff, it, you're going to be a little bit. You mean maybe a little gun shy at first, but I think once we get into this uh, flow of the offense and stuff and get, you know, after about the first 10 minutes of the game, I think we'll settle down and be able to go through our stuff and, and really get into it and uh, cause Ashland some problems. Who will be causing these problems? A good mixture of old and new. We all know what LaRon Moore and Paul Cluxton and Shannon Miner are going to do and pretty well what the Listermans are going to do. And then again, our, our addition interiorly, uh, Cliff Clinton, you know, he's 6'7", uh, junior college transfer. He's, he's playing awfully well, too. I'm still a little concerned about when we get to that 7th, 8th, and ninth spot in our, in our lineup, whether or not we're going to be consistent there. Ken Shields wouldn't be a true coach if he didn't have at least one concern in November. I think it's going to be a good game, you know. It's going to get a crowd back in the house to see us play on the regular season. I think Ashland is a good team. I think we just got to come out and play and play together. The fun continues right through Saturday at Regents Hall. d of Channel 9 Sports. And, of course, we will be monitoring their progress closely. We're counting on it. Thank As you. only you can Thank do. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> right. the faith. <laughs> Thank 
KU playing tonight. That's right. We are at the epicenter of sports, Carol. Epicenter. Thank yes, you very we much. You know, the Tri State, <laughs> the Tri State boasts two top ranked college basketball teams in the country. UC number one in Division One won't open until Saturday against Western Carolina. Whereas the NKU Norse, the Division Two Pace Center opened its home schedule tonight against Ashland. Ken Shields team, fresh from the national tip off title, had the offense turned up early. Junior college transfer with Demond Lane to LeBron Moore. He knows his way around region salt. He finished with 31 points. Lane can receive as well as give the pass from Shannon Miner. He slams it home for two of his 10 points. And Miner was a major factor tonight himself. A great defensive stand, the steal, and the rush up court. The no look pass to former Holy Cross star Todd Clark. The foul, 10 for him, 101 for NKU, 65 for Ash, and they are 4 0. The elder community rallied behind their Panthers tomorrow. We have two number one college sports teams in the area, and these guys are good. Go NKU. Yes, they are very good. And yes, we do have two number ones. The other one being? Uh, UC. UC. All right. Northern Kentucky is no longer a little brother in local hoops. The Norse have grown up into one of the biggest, baddest bullies in Division II. It was the home opener tonight. The Norse hosting the Griffin Lions Club Classic. Senior Leron Moore did a number on Ashland. Moore hits for 31 points. The Norse broke this game open early. Andy Listerman from the corner connects. The man out of Cuffcast scores 11. Then it's back to Leron Moore cutting through the lane. Northern Kentucky wins big 101 to 65. The Norse are off to a full start. In the NBA, the Bulls are just out of control. Highest paid player and had a year and a half left on his contract. At the hoop, UC is not the only highly rated team in the area. NKU is ranked second in Division II and played its home opener tonight. The Norse play a physical brand of ball, just ask photojournalist Chris Braz. He kept shooting and so did NKU. Check out the alley-oop from DeMond Lane to LaRon Moore. NASA, we have liftoff. Shannon Miner says, I can do that too. Moore can't quite finish this time, but he shows some persistence, and he finished with 31 points as NKU won its fourth straight, 101-65. NKU is home again on Saturday afternoon at 3. Xavier opens its season a half... Now, sports director Brad Johansson with tonight's scores and highlights. They are the team many consider to be the best in Division Two, and tonight the Norse tried to make it 4-0 against Ashland out at NKU. The Norse supporters packing in to see the best. Here's how you break them down. You drive the middle, kick it back out, Listerman for three, and the fans love it. And they love LaRon Moore. Take the pill to the hole with a little flavor. Ashland was kind of helpless tonight, and LaRon was warm. Off the alley-oop. Watch him flush this thing. NKU is ready to play this year. 101 65 is your final. Bearcats living life at the top of the polls and realizing. Country's best two teams in Division II hoops. Trying to stay undefeated tonight. NKU Norse taking on Indiana Southeast. Hey, come on, straighten that up. You, you can't show highlights. Look, there we go. Okay. Norse straighten things out with a pressure. Shannon Miner getting the trap. LaRon Moore, the showtime. Uh, these guys are in midseason form. Watch the execution. Moore on the break to Listerman to get this back to Lane, who gets it back to Listerman, who finishes, gets the foul. The Norse roll. This is ugly. 102 68 is your final as they stay undefeated. All right, some other college. Ohio State rules 71-55. Meantime, NKU off to its best start ever, looking to extend that streak against Indiana Southeast. Shannon Miner, alley-oop to LaRon Moore. He had 26 points, and Ken Shields couldn't be happier. Andy Listerman on the break to Shannon Miner, who leaves the drop for Paul Buxton, who then hits the three. And the Norse play defense as well and play it darn well. Miner and Moore trap Damon Bates. Moore comes away with the steal, does the dipsy do Dunkaroo as the Norse roll to 8 0, 102 68. And tonight, the undefeated Norse hosting Southeast Indiana. Cliff Clinton scores to get NKU rolling. Then the freshman out of Roger Bacon gets the block. That's Mitch Perdricks. 
Here comes Mitch to finish it at the other end. The Norse had a slim lead at the half, but in the second half, it's all NKU. Kevin Listerman with the no look to Clinton. The Norse blow it open, 102 to 68 the final elsewhere. Kent loses to Ohio State women's. Regents Hall was rocking. NKU looking to run its record to a perfect 12 and 0. LaRon Moore gets it to Todd Clark and the big man lays it in. The Norse get 22 points out of Paul Cluxton and this little number from Moore. Second rank NKU wins again, 86 to 60. On the over Arkansas. The Norris Philbin Regents Hall this afternoon, hosting Wisconsin Parkside, NKU with the big time front line, and Ron Moore with the running banker. Moore with a dozen. Yeah, the Norris do the little things right. Simple backdoor, Paul Cluxton, yes sir, 22 for him, right in the nylons. And NKU unchallenged today, 86 to 60, your final, the Norris are now six and zero. Oh. To the scoreboard we go. And Orlando team. They also have a home game next Sunday night. We're talking basketball tonight. Scott Drought and Ralph Lee are here, and so is Mike from Fort Thomas. Hey, Mike. Hey, Scott. This is your old tennis coach from Highlands High School. How you doing? Oh, fine, fine. How are you, Coach? Could you comment on Coach Shields and the good fortune he's had out at NKU? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. Coach Shields obviously really has it cooking right now at, uh, at, at out at Northern. In fact, the success that he's had these last three or four years has been unprecedented in, in uh, Northern basketball. Um, I think that this year's team, and I know I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but they have as good a chance to win the NCAA uh, Division II championship as anyone. Uh, they have a solidified center in, uh, in uh, Cluxton, excuse me, in, in Clinton. He gives them a shot blocker and an, an intimidator inside. They have great shooters. In, uh, in, in Cluxton, good all-around guard play in, in the two Listermans, and it's really exciting just to see what Kenny Shields has done with Northern's program, especially since he didn't have that great success early on. Just a class act. Yes. He, he hung in there. He's a guy who was on his way out, so to speak, at, at Northern Kentucky, and um, had a great year. Hung in there. Just a class act. Every time you see him out on the road or anything like that, his staff, his whole program is a class act. Yeah, one of the things is if those guys get into the tournament again this year, which they likely will. Uh, they've all been there before. Yeah. Most of them have at least one, sometimes two years experience already. Exactly. Yeah, and, that, and that's big. And I think you were talking about that a little bit. Xavier's team right now only has, their, you know, they're probably sophomores and juniors. And it's amazing to see the success that they've had. And I think that that'll parlay over with Northern this year. Rick from Evanston. Hey, Rick. How's it going tonight, guys? Well, it's going Thank fine. You. Okay, I, had, I, got some, I think I got some good news for UC fans. It's against Kentucky Wesleyan, then against Bellarmine. Miami tips off its Mid-American Conference schedule next Saturday at home. Other scores. Uh, Kentucky Wesleyan pulls the upset of NKU as uh, the Norris lose by the, uh, and uh, also Kansas wins and so does. believe that NKU Hoops coach Kenny Shields is wondering what in the world happens to my teams when we go to Kentucky Wesleyan. Since taking over the team in 1988, the Norse have gone 0-9 in Owensboro, including last night's 75-74 defeat to the Panthers. And now the entire team is wondering how far it will fall in the Division II poll due out next Tuesday. And this young fan must already be well-versed on NKU's past history at the Sports Center in Owensboro. Yeah, spit happens. And the Panthers show their intent early. The feed inside to Andre Smith over LaRon Moore, and it's 6-0 Kentucky Wesleyan. But NKU gets things going against the press. Kevin Listerman to Moore to Cliff Clinton for the easy two, eight to four Panthers. But the big problem in the first half, Clinton, miss, Moore, clang, Andy Listerman, off, Clinton again. You see a pattern developing here? 38.7% shooting from the floor, 9% below their average. Meanwhile, Wesleyan continues to build the lead. Simon Kenton grabbed Jeff Croman with a three to put the Panthers up 23 to nine. But NKU battles back. Paul Cluxon from half court, just about. LaRon Moore, and it's not a good time to be Wesleyan's Rennie Harris. 
There you see why. Moore with 10 in the first half to lead all scores. But the Panthers led all teams in scoring for the half, 41-32, as Smith tallies another pair, and Coach Shields is wondering if he can break the hex. So we go to half number two. No, this is not an optical illusion. We switch sides, and just like the players do. Andre Smith says he'll keep scoring, though. The nifty spin move, Smith finished with 19. But NKU is able to back, battle back more for two, and then Todd Clark will pick up the steal, and he goes down to the other end as well. And it's 48-43, Kentucky Wesleyan. NKU kept chipping away, and with just over seven minutes remaining, DeMond Lane with the hoop to make it 63-62 Panthers. The Norse then took the lead when Moore cans this three. He finished the game with a game-high 22, and things were looking good as the good guys were up 72-70 with 3.24 to go. We're now at 74-72 Wesleyan, a minute and a half left. The feed inside to Clinton, but he's called for the charge. And the bucket won't count. The NKU bench can't believe it, but the call, of course, will stand. Then after the Norse tied things at 74, under 20 seconds to go, the foul is called on NKU, sending Patrick Critchlow to the line. Critchlow cans one of two with 14 ticks left, giving NKU one last chance to pull it out, but Shannon Miner's shot is off. Clinton can't put in the rebound, and NKU falls 75-74. We had a couple shots, you know, wouldn't go in. You know, I thought we got fouled. It doesn't matter what I think, but it was, it was a tremendous finish, and I think you got to credit uh, Kentucky Wesleyan. The women battled it out earlier in the evening with NKU, evening its record at 5 and So uh, turn back the clock Thursday night and check out the highlights of a thrilling matchup between NKU and Kentucky Wesleyan. Wages were at the Owensboro Sports Center to enjoy this one. Early on, it's the Panthers' Andre Smith, a Xavier transfer with the jumper as the home team jumped out to an early lead. Here's some nice NKU action as Kevin Listerman passes to LaRon Moore, who then dishes to Cliff Clinton underneath for the jam. However, the big problem for NKU in the first half was missed shots. The Norse were a dismal 38% from the field, and that helped Wesleyan maintain the lead throughout the first half. At the other end, Simon Kenton graduate Jeff Croman adds three more to the Kentucky Wesleyan cause by knocking down the tray as the purple and white maintain control. NKU counters as Paul Cluxton knocks down the three-point field goal try. Next, it's LaRon Moore receiving a long pass and going in for the slam dunk that pleases the NKU faithful, which made the trip to Owensburg. But it's Andre Smith getting two more as Wesleyan led it 41-32 at halftime. The home team kept the heat on in the second half. Andre Smith goes up and gets two more for the purple and white attack. With that comes the Norse as DeMon Lane passes to Moore, who goes in for the one-handed jam. Next, it's Todd Clark coming up with the steal and going in for the layup as the Norse clawed back into it. Lane then cans the jumper as NKU pulled back to within one point. Seconds later, it's Moore canning a three as the Norse take their first lead of the game at 72-70 with 324 remaining in the contest. Then comes the most controversial call of the game as Cliff Clinton going up to the basket is called for the charge. I don't think so, and neither does the NKU bench. With the contest even at 74, Pat Critchlow is fouled with 13 and a half seconds remaining. He then cans one free throw to give the Panthers the lead at 75-74. Then in the final 10 seconds, it's Miner driving and missing. Clinton gets the rebound and misses. Moore then misses the tip as time expires and the Norse lose their first game of the year, 75 to 74. Coach, a heartbreaking ending and really, uh, you watch that again, how did that ball not go in there? Well, you know, we, we had uh, three shots in the last probably six seconds and uh, you would have hoped that one of them would have went, uh, any of them could have gone. Uh, the first one that Shannon got off was a little strained. Uh, uh, it wasn't a, a shot that, that really had a high percentage written on it, as it turned out, uh, at coming through there with that pressure. But, uh, you know, it was a tough, tough loss, no question about it. 
71 to 79. To the scores now. NKU wins. They come from behind. And I do not know. Talk about a little balance. The Cats take care of business tonight. They hammer Kinesia 68-45. Last year, it was Indianapolis handing NKU their first loss of the season tonight. The Norse trying to return the favor to Indy at 14-0 on the road. You cannot turn it over, and the Norse did. A quick strip, coast to coast. This one was close all the way. Cliff Clinton, the reason NKU kept it that way. He will get the miss, then he will also get the rebound. And the power flush. He had 28, less than five seconds left. The Greyhounds hit the front end of one on one, but then they missed the second half rebound outlet to Shannon Miner. Final shot gets the board, gets the rim. No net. The Norse have now lost two, both in conference. 74 73 is your final tonight. Last week, Heather. People. All right, well, let's uh, head, uh, turn back the clock Thursday night. NKU in Indianapolis from Indy. A few of the Norse faithful who made the trip to Indianapolis for Thursday night's battle. Early on, it's NKU's LaRon Moore missing, but Cliff Clinton is there for the jam. Next, it's Moore missing from in the lane, but Andy Listerman is there for the rebound and deuce. At the other end, it's Indianapolis controlling the boards. First, cut Tyrone Barksdale misses the jumper. David Weesey then makes a great save as Indianapolis retains possession. Jim Lindsay then misses the layup, but Weesey gets the rebound and scores as he was fouled. Later, it's Jim Lindsay passing to Terry McBride who gets the layup. The Norse counter as Paul Cluxton knocks down the three-point try. Clinton then misses the short jumper, but goes up and gets the jam. The Greyhounds led at 38-34 at halftime. In the second half, it's Indy's Bart Hullabar missing, but Weesey is there for the rebound and dunk. Weesey also had the hot hand from outside as he nails the three-pointer. But back comes NKU as Shannon Miner passes to Andy Listerman, who gets a layup. Indy counters as McBride feeds Weesey, who gets another slam as the home team continued to lead. Miner then comes back for the Norse by knocking down the three-pointer. A minute later, it's Miner scoring as he was fouled. Then with NKU down two late in the game, it's Kevin Listerman coming up with the steal, which thrilled the Norse faithful. NKU then tied things up as Miner passes inside to Clinton, who gets the layup to make it 73 all. Then with 15 seconds to go, the Greyhounds have the ball when Matt Britton misses. Weesey gets the rebound and has it roll off. Another fight for the ball resulted in a foul called on NKU. Weesey goes one for two from the free throw line, and after he misses the second, NKU's minor launches a three with three seconds left, but it's off the mark, and Indianapolis wins it 74-73. to So, Coach, really for the second time in a week, you come down the court with a chance to win it. The ball just... Right. He sure did, and uh, let's go back and take a look at Saturday's highlights, NKU and Quincy. Early on, it's NKU jumping out to a 9-2 lead as Andy Listerman knocks down the three-pointer, but Quincy goes on an 8-0 run, and after this layup by Jay Driscoll, the visitors led it 10-9. However, NKU regains the lead at the other end as Cliff Clinton goes into the lane and gets the deuce. The Norse then fell behind 15 to 12 before going on a 13-0 run, which was led by Clinton, who scored 10 of the 13 as NKU built a 25 to 15 first half lead. Later, it's Paul Cluxton feeding LaRon Moore, who gets the slam dunk as he was fouled. Next, it's Shannon Miner with the beautiful lob to Moore for the jam as the Norse led at 42 to 28 at halftime. In the second half, it's Miner with a three as NKU led 47 to 34. Seconds later, it's Miner with another tray right here as the Norse led 50 to 34. However, the Hawks roar back in this one as this jumper by James Harris with 8.58 left cut the Norse lead to three at 58.55. But NKU goes back up seven thanks to a couple of buckets from none other than senior LaRon Moore. 
Clutch pass key Quincy cuts the lead to two at 66-64 after Frank McIntosh comes up with the loose ball and goes all the way for the layup with 3.38 remaining. However, the Norse do play tough down the stretch and hang on to win it 76-73. to Well, Ron Moore and Cliff Clinton, both 19 points apiece to lead Northern Kentucky University in that victory. And As a winner over Bluffton, Cincinnati State also gets the win. The Lady Muskies fall to Duquesne, and NKU wins by 10 over Quincy. The NKU men's team has only lost two games by two points this season. To keep it that way, they came out playing very well. Shannon Miner to LaRon Moore for two. Miner is a Colerain grad, and he was feeling right at home. Here he busts out the three-pointer as the Norse hang on, shooting down Quincy 76 to 73. In the bluegrass state. He gets win number 600. Full house looking on in Regents Hall. Norris against Quincy. Paul Cluxton driving, finding Shannon Miner. He scores from the back door, draws a foul too. And Lee Ron Moore. He was zeroing in from three point land. He had 19 on the night, and so did. Clinton, the Norris win, 76 to 63, make it 73. And the NKU women also victorious today, 71 61, double dip. Let's see the other scores. Orleans two weeks from now. Oh. Basketball, the Norse of NKU are in Fort Wayne Thursday and at St. Joe's on Saturday. Meanwhile, the center for NKU, Cliff Clinton, today was named the Player of the Week in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. In two games last week, Clinton averaged more than 23 points and 10 rebounds. by the New York Knicks. Well, last year it was NKU, the Norse making it all the way to basketball's Division II final game, and the exposure produced plenty of notoriety for the program. As Tim Bray reports, it also extended recruiting beyond the Tri-State. First points from Kevin Listerman. NKU's exposure in the national finals has paid big dividends. Enter and take your position, center Cliff Clinton. He comes all the way from the Sunshine State. I saw him on TV playing a national championship game, and um, I heard, you know, I heard a proof right about him. And um, my coach got in contact with them from my junior college, and they, and they, you know, sent me, and I came up for a visit, and I liked it. It's certainly hard for a first-year player to come in and make an impact, especially with a veteran team. Well, Cliff has done that exceptionally well. Thursday, Clinton was a force in the paint. 27 points and a bucket of boards. And then Saturday, he showed his agility in the lane two of his 19 points. His skills are well defined and in many ways he's been able to step right in and fill the role of Reggie Talbot. Cliff could have probably went Division One, but in order to be a Division Two contender you have to have Division One type players and that's what Cliff is. This is not a fantasy. Remember he handpicked his school. Now he wants to continue to contribute to NKU returning to the title game. Coming in playing center, you know, we got Laron and Paul, they were, you know, two preseason all America. You know, we can go all the way with this team. At Northern Kentucky University, Tim Bray, 12 sports. And they are back on the winning track. Super Bowl now set. To number 21. Best of the numbers, Paul Cluxton set a school record. 10 threes as the Norse wins. Syracuse upsets Nova tonight. That's. This afternoon. NKU big tonight. Shannon Meyer collects his uh, 1,000th point. Clemson wins. And. Uh, Now, 
Sports Director Brad Johansson with tonight's scores and highlights. Big Ten Freedom Hall, Memphis going for the upset. This year final, the Norse in a big one tonight at Regents Hall. Taking on the 12th ranked Southern Indiana Packed House to see the 18th ranked Norse. LaRon Moore helping to build the lead. LaRon for three. Yeah, he had 20 on the night. Kevin Listerman, one on one in the lane. A tough turnaround. Fade away. Get the lead 11. Then Todd Clark going to work on the left block. To the baseline and off the window. 17 on the night. The Norse roll. 96 79 to go 17 and 2. Yeah, we've all been playing good. Um, the, the line has been changed around a little bit. I, I don't know what it is. I guess it's just a new fresh start, new change, different people in there, and uh, it's really making us play well. We're all it's fresh. Wake Forest over Clemson in a thriller. Every Next up for Xavier is Duquesne this Saturday. They'll tip that off at the gardens at noon. A full house at NKU. The Norse taking on Southern Indiana. Kevin Listerman is on the run. He's not going to stop until he gets the deuce. LaRon Moore was the big man for the Norse tonight. Here's the big guy bombing from long range. Moore pumps in 20. Southern Indiana had only one loss coming into this game, but Northern was too tough. Todd Clark with a nice move down low. The Norse win. Sports, we're talking about. second time this year to conference foe Memphis. They knocked them off at Freedom Hall 64-58. The Norse hosted Southern Indiana. Paul Cluxton, he shoots 50% from three-point range. He did just that tonight, he finished with 11 points. SIU is led by Johnny Moore, who averages 18, and guess what? He had 18 tonight. Eventually, the Screaming Eagles were silenced by NKU's transition game. Kevin Listerman coast to coast, NKU 96-79. Enjoy some of that game as we look back at some highlights of Thursday night's game between NKU and Southern Indiana. A packed house was on hand for the showdown between the Norse and the Screaming Eagles. In the first half, it's Paul Cluxton with the tray as NKU takes the early lead. Next, it's LaRon Moore missing, but he gets the rebound and jam as NKU led it 14-6. Just before halftime, it's Andy Listerman with the trifecta as the Norse led it 49-33 at halftime. In the second half, it's Clint Clinton coming up with the steal. He sends the long pass down court to Todd Clark, who gets the layup. Johnny Moore led USI with 18, three coming on this tray. However, the night would belong to NKU as Kevin Listerman hits the turnaround J from in the lane. A little later, it's Shannon Miner passing to Clark, who gets two of his 17 on the night as the Norse roll 96 to 79. LaRon Moore had 20 points, and also uh, Andy Listerman, a big night, 16 for uh, NKU. had overproductive evenings. Let's uh, take a look Saturday afternoon's highlights between NKU and SIU Edwardsville. Early in the first half, it's Shannon Miner with the tray to even things up at five. With NKU up 15-11, Kevin Listerman knocks down the three-pointer to lengthen the Norse lead. Seconds later, it's Damon Lane coming up with the steal, and he goes in for the two-handed jam as the black and gold take a nine-point advantage at 20-11. Here's some more great NKUD as Kevin Listerman comes up with the steal and takes it all the way for the uncontested layup as the Norse continued the roll. Paul Cluxton then adds a three-pointer to the Northern effort as the home team led by six at the half, 39 to 33. In the second half, it's LaRon Moore with the short jumper as Northern Kentucky had a nine-point advantage at 46-37, but the Cougars hung tough as this three by Jason Holmes made it 48-42. However, the Norse come back with a couple of Andy Listerman layups to go back up 10 at 52-42. Andy had 18 on the afternoon. Next, it's Cliff Clinton getting two of his game-high 19 as Northern Kentucky improves to 18-2 overall and 8-2 in the GLBC with an 87-70 victory. Here you get a look at some of the highlights from Saturday.
Thursday night. NKU Norseman and Regents Hall taking on Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Norse with the ball. They're going to get it to Kevin Listerman, and he drills a three. NKU with the lead. Norse now off the break. Shannon Miner with a dish to the other Listerman, Andy, and the young man lays it in. Andrew had 18 points. NKU wins 87 to 70. That's your final there. At Cincinnati State, Coach John. Twenty-five, sixty-two, forty-nine. Redskins is your final. Take your thumb out of your mouth, son. You're liable to get buck teeth. NKU hosting SIU Edwardsville. The Norse running early. Demon Lane to Andy Listerman to Cliff Clinton. Oh yeah, Clinton finished with 19. Listerman finished with 18, two because Clinton missed this shot and Andy made this one. The Norse roll by 17, 87-70 the final. Here's a couple of more scores on the board. Five. Miami improves to six and one in the MAC. That's good enough for first place. The Norris played at home this afternoon. They defeated Southern Illinois of Edwardsville. Cliff Clinton led the way with 19. a winner over NKU. On the men's side, NKU played host to Southern Illinois at Edwardsville. That's Andy Listerman taking it to the rack. Ken Shields was looking well pleased. That's because NKU is on the break again. Listerman over to Cliff Clinton. Enough said. NKU wins 87 to 70. Welcome back to the Norse Report. You know, Cliff Clinton has been a big key for the men's squad success here during the 1996-97 season. Scott Borders sat down last week and talked to Cliff, and he has this spotlight report. After last season's bid for a national championship fell one game short, Northern Kentucky Norse coach Kenny Shields knew the Norse would have to retool their front line with the loss of Reggie Talbert and Andre McClendon. Thanks to some national exposure, the Norse landed six foot seven, 235 pound Cliff Clinton out of Manatee Community College in Florida, where he averaged nearly a double-double last season. I asked Cliff about his choosing to play at Northern Kentucky. Uh, the really big choice was, overall, was um, I can come in and play because, you know, Reggie and Reggie and Andre were leaving, and um, they had a good, t good team and, you know, a big chance of playing for the Nationals next year. The big need for the Norse was for someone to come in and be able to post up against other GLVC big men. Cliff filled this role with immediate results. Well, they wanted, first top thing they wanted out of me was rebounding and bring a little bit low post, post um, scoring because, see, they can make open shots for people like Paul and Shannon and people out there who shoot the three. You know, see, they have to double down. But many times players making the transition to Division II have to adjust to a different style of play. The same was true initially for Clinton. This has been an adjustment. But there, I, you know, I had to score every night, you know, in order to win, have a big game every night in order to win. But here, we don't. Have, I don't have to have a big game, but you know, I still have to rebound and do stuff like block shots. But I don't have to score big every night, you know, in order to win a ball game. After starting early in the season, Clinton now will be coming off the bench in a move Coach Shields believes will provide the Norse much-needed lift off the bench. Cliff's impressive numbers have dropped very little, and his expectations remain high. Yeah, this team is still, as long as we got to pick up our defense more and go out there and play and don't worry about our two losses, we can go all the way. For the Norse Report, this is Scott Borders reporting. All right, thanks, Scott. Hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, parents, you know how proud you feel when your child succeeds, like my son being the pull-up king of his school? Well, the father of one <laughs> NKU basketball star knows that feeling oh so well, but in this case, dad's also part of the reason for the success. Next, see how a special father-son bond plays out on the court. National pull-up king, huh? Yes, it. Oh. At his school. All right, but first, let's... Nothing But Net, brought to you by Kroger and Mike Albert Auto Superstores. DJ's joining us to talk about family ties. Hmm, tell us more. You've heard the old adage, the family that prays together stays together. As a matter of fact, I have. We can extend that to plays together as well. Northern Kentucky welcomes Bellarmine to town tomorrow night. The Norse are on a seven-game win streak while Bellarmine's knocked off four wins in a row. The Norse attribute their success to that time-tested combination of solid coaching, sound fundamentals, good genes, and as John Popovich tells us in today's Nothing But Net, practice, practice, practice. Basketball practice ended hours ago at NKU. But if you can coach your way into a locked up Regents Hall, you find something still going on. It's 10 o'clock and Shannon Miner is out shooting baskets with his father Pete. It's shot after shot after shot after shot. I don't worry about how often it goes in, but my technique and that, and if everything's there, if I'm getting my uh, the arch on the ball, and if I'm, if I'm doing everything right, and if my elbow's straight. If something's out of whack, his dad could point it out. Because this isn't a one-night get-together, this is an each-and-every-night get-together. Pete Miner works in Cincinnati from 7 in the morning till 9 at night, and then he meets his son at the gym for these nightly sessions. And if there's a game that night, home or away, Pete Miner is there as well. He's uh, driven to North Dakota, he drove to Florida, you know, he flew to California with us. I mean, he goes everywhere. Pete Miner hasn't missed one of Shannon's games since the seventh grade. And that covered seasons at Coleraine when the Cardinals were among the area's best. And it's included four seasons at NKU where the Norse have enjoyed unparalleled success. He, he's quick. He's the quickest player I've ever coached. Shannon runs Kenny Shields' offense, delivering the ball on the run, putting the ball up for the spectacular jam, and sometimes just making the simple handoff and running interference for the outside shot. He has great penetrating ability, and he has great view of the court. Uh, his peripheral vision on the court is exceptional. I try to make everybody around me better. I try to bring out the, the, the best out of LeRon and Clucks and the Listmans and everybody else and Cliff. I want to make them better. Making Miner even more effective is his outside shooting ability. He hits nearly 48% from three-point range. Shooting is repetition and, and uh, confidence. And right now I'm shooting with a lot of confidence, and I get that confidence from shooting a lot. And that takes us back to those nightly shoot-arounds on the court with his dad. See how much he wants me to be, you know, and be good in that. It, it, it just uh, tears me up inside to know that I want to work just as hard as he does. It's a work ethic here being handed down. Working to make your team better by working to make yourself better. John Popovich, Channel 9 Sports, Highland Heights. Nice story. Nice family. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is good. Thanks, Denny. Place Bowling Green. At Regents Hall this evening, oh my goodness, they're up in the air. NKU facing Bellarmine. The big guy, Todd Clark, showing some skills. Bags that one and then I don't know, he's hailing a cab. We see you, Todd. Here's the NKU stuff we like. Andy Listerman with the steal out front to Shannon Miner on the break. Back to Andy. Easy two. NKU wins by 20. LaRon Moore leads him with 20. Now, Xavier not back after it until Saturday. Eight twenty nine half time hole. NKU got 20 points from LaRon Moore and two more free throws from Paul Cluxton. Now 56 straight for the Norse forward. They win their 12th straight at Regents Hall, 78-58. Down at Freedom Hall, the news not so good for the Louisville... Overall, 
The NKU ladies started off the night with a 71-63 win over Bellarmine. The men trying to do the same with the help of cheerleaders. Well, future cheerleaders anyway. Shannon Miner at the top of the key, giving up the rock. Oh, the perfect free throw of Paul Cluxton. Not bad from three, at 17, but the Norse need a little more. LaRon Moore on the steal and the coast to flush. Want some more? How about a little Cluxton dish? There's some more. He had 20 on the night. The Norse win by 20 to go 21 and two. Top 25, Billikens. Now, seven and three in the MAC Eastern Michigan with a one game lead over the Redskins now with an eight and two conference record. We talked about Tulane earlier with an 11 game winning streak. Well, Northern Kentucky was at home tonight going for their eighth straight win. And the students, as always, were fired up for another spanking by the home team. Colerain grad Shannon Miner gets out his paddle first as he fires the three pointer. Next, it's LaRon Moore with the sticky fingers. He takes it all the way for the Jordan like slam. Now watch this heads-up play as the Norse fire the full-court pass. DeMond Lane slides in for the easy lay-in. NKU makes it eight in a row. Second highest number of UFO sightings. Force falls to Thomas Moore, and Kentucky Wesleyan gets the win over the Lady Norse. It was homecoming at NKU as the Norths look to avenge one of their two losses on the season by taking on Kentucky Wesley, and that's LaRon Moore doing his part to get the crowd on their feet. The Norths continue to get good production out of e EKU transfer. Todd Clark, he takes the rock and drills the turnaround jumper. NKU was burning down the house, and Shannon Miner, well, he was burning up the nets. NKU gets the win over Kentucky Wesley in 79-73. to before the skins are now seven and four in the match finding somebody open so Moore makes himself available you can count that and then Shannon Miner watch Shannon Miner go his free ball side pocket he had ten points Paul Cluxton he keeps the streak going from the stripes and the Norse they go on to win is run from noon until 5 on Sunday. Sports coming up next on ABC 9. Northern Kentucky against Kentucky Wesleyan tonight with a big personal streak on the line, literally. And boxer Oliver McCall explains his strange behavior in last night's title bout against Lennox Lewis. There's a lot on the line tonight with that uh, NKU. Yeah, this Kentucky is Wesley. one of, and they have another big game next yeah. week, but they had to get past this one. And it was awfully good day for the local college teams who stayed at home. You see this afternoon at NKU tonight. A packed house over at Regents Hall against Kentucky Wesleyan, who had won an earlier meeting. But tonight, Shannon Miner throwing inside to Cliff Clinton. He scores, he gets fouled. Clinton led the scoring with 19 points. He got plenty of support from LaRon Moore, who had 17. He takes the pass, gets hammered, but still scores. That becomes a three-point play. The Norse wanted this one badly. They played hard. Clinton scores two more here with a two-handed dunk. The crowd loves it, and NKU wins for the 22nd time this season. Ninth in a row, they beat Wesleyan by six tonight. Meanwhile, the foul shooting streak of Paul Cluxton continues. When a technical was called at the Wesleyan coach today, Paul went to the line twice, sank them both. He's now hit 58 straight free throws. Miami Redskins were on the road. Kroger and Mike Albert Auto Superstores. Dennis Jensen joins us now with sports. Talking about someone who's consistent. That's right. Yes. They're perfect. And <laughs> perfection isn't easy to deal with or be around. 
Just ask Carolyn Clyde. Oh, De gee. Dealing with a perfect fool on a daily basis takes its toll. Ask oh. them. Yours truly aside, there's pressure that comes with being perfect when that claim to fame can evaporate with your next free throw. Sports director John Popovich joins us live from the gardens where Xavier plays Dayton tonight and has more. John? Yeah, and DJ, this is a big basketball game, a very important one for the Xavier Musketeers. They have a chance to avenge one of their few losses of the season in January. They lost in Dayton. Will the Dayton Flyers come down here tonight? We'll talk about that more a half hour from now. But first, the story of a pinpoint free throw shooter in northern Kentucky. That is the subject of tonight's Nothing But Net. It's the story of a guy who simply doesn't miss. When you watch Paul Cluxton, it looks like the easiest shot in the world. It's only 15 feet. It's not contested. You just toss it up there and swish. But watch foul shooting by others, and it's clank and boink and donk. Sometimes foul shooting can be tough. You're out there by yourself, and you got people saying nice things about your moms and your dads and stuff like that. <laughs> but laid back Paul Cluxton of Lynchburg, Ohio, seemingly can make these shots all night long. For him, it's like pitching pennies into the well, ocean. The interesting thing, though, that Paul just doesn't do this during practice, he does it during games. Cluxton has not missed a foul shot this year. He's hit a streak of 58 in a row. He's got impeccable technique, he's got excellent work habits, and he's got a tremendous confidence level. His philosophy is simplicity. Just uh, put your foot up middle of the line. There's always the carpenter hole where they made the basket to make sure it was centered to the court and everything. There's always a little, you know, just a little uh, <coughs> carpenter hole mm -hmm. where the nail is. Put your, I put my right foot up because I'm right-handed. Put your left foot wherever you feel comfortable. Just take one dribble and shoot. That's exactly how he does it. You remember how Tom Browning just used to get the ball, wind up, and throw it? Cluxton's the same way in a game. No suspense, just one dribble and he lets it fly. During his career, he's made 93% of these shots. And this year, it's perfect and a streak, which he admits he's thinking about. Then I had a dream when we, <clears throat> I was in a hotel somewhere and I had a dream I missed my 50th one, but I got by that one, so. He knows and I know he's gonna miss one, but he promised me it's gonna be in an industrial league down the road. Because, of course, the uh, tendency uh, is for short, chubby guys in sweaters to believe him. they can do what he does. So, clank, another donk. To make a long story short, I made two of five, shack-like numbers. Paul stepped to the line and quickly and cleanly made four in a row. It was only on his fifth and final try that... There it is. Did you get that one? We'd better get it, because it doesn't happen much. And this season, it hasn't happened at all. Paul tries to extend his streak tomorrow night at Regions Hall, and this is a huge basketball game for the Norse from Northern Kentucky. Foul. He made all... A lot of screens and I was open and I knocked them down. Yes, he did. Across the river, NKU in action, taking on Indy tonight. And Indy was entering the Dragon's lair. It was NKU early. Laron Moore taking it to the rack strong. Two of his game tie, 26. Norse on the attack again. Listerman to Cliff Clinton in the post. Backs in and hits. Indy strong down the stretch on the break. Did someone say oop me? That was David Weiss. Indy wins it in OT. 74-71, tough loss. Utah big over SMU. Ball game for the Norse from Northern Kentucky. Foul. He made all three of his free throws, 67 in a row, mind you now. Meantime, Cliff Clinton was on the receiving end of this alley oops from Shannon Miner. Uh, no jam, maybe it's jelly. Jam doesn't move that well. He had 13 NKUs. Wins 102-60. Tonight, Cluxton with another big game. Gamecocks beat. Colorado is leading in the second half. Senior day at NKU. Paul Cluxton, Shannon Miner, and LaRon Moore. 
They've enjoyed tremendous careers with the Norse. Coach Ken Shields will certainly miss those young men. After the emotional celebration, NKU took the court against IPFW. Paul Cluxton had 16. Shannon Miner showing that his many nights of practicing with his dad have paid off. And Leron Moore, he's provided plenty of highlights in his tenure. He got out on the break, finished up strong. He too scored 16. NKU, a 95-68 winner. High school basketball. Well, it was senior day at NKU. The Norse graduated three. Shannon Miner, Paul Cluxton, and Leron Moore. And this group has won 50 games in the last two years for the Norse. And this afternoon at Regent Hall, NKU faced a Fort Wayne zone at the start of the second half. Miner found a seam, and there's Cliff Clinton throwing, throwing it down. 18 for Clinton, 16 for Cluxton, and Moore. Hey, they're partying tonight. 95-68, the final. The Norse win at home this afternoon. To the scores. Back here in Regents Hall, about 35 seconds to go before we turn it over to Jay Winstall, the PA announcer, and the Senior Day Ceremonies here at NKU, of course, honoring Paul Cluxton, LaRon Moore, Shannon Miner, and team manager Paul Schwarber. All seniors and all in their final home games today. NKU and IPFW. Nice crowd on hand. Yeah. Not capacity, but certainly a, a real nice crowd for... Well, the home finale, and it may be capacity before it's over because they're still streaming in. Now let's go to PA announcer Jay Winstall, and he'll have the body dynamic starting lineups with first senior day ceremonies at Northern Kentucky University. In just a minute, we had a little delay before <laughs> the women too, so. Yeah, we have a tough time timing this thing up. No doubt about that. No, but almost a capacity crowd. This is the last chance these folks will get, excluding the NCAAs, that they'll get a, a chance to see Flux and Laurent Moore and Shannon Meyer. Here we go to Jay Winston. Four very special senior members of the Northern Kentucky University men's basketball team. Since their arrival in 1993, NKU has emerged into one of the powerhouse programs in the Great Lakes Valley Conference and a contender for the NCAA Division II National Championship. They have helped elevate Norse basketball into the spotlight, both regionally and nationally, and everyone associated with NKU Athletics is grateful for the work and dedication they have shown the past four years. The first senior we are honoring this afternoon has been an integral part of the NKU basketball program as the equipment manager, and head coach Ken Shields has said on many occasions that this gentleman is one of the most important members of the team. Most people never recognize how important the duties of the manager are during the season. But the players, coaches, and staff all know about the hard work and dedication that goes into this very vital position. Ladies and gentlemen, from Silver Grove, Kentucky, Paul Schwarber, escorted by Carl John and Terry Schwarber. Our second senior owns seven school records, and he will no doubt go down as one of the greatest shooters in the history of Northern Kentucky University and the Great Lakes Valley Conference. He has scored 1,373 career points to rank number seven on the Norse's all-time scoring list, is NKU's all-time leader in free throw percentage, three-pointers made, consecutive free throws made, and three-pointers made in a game. He was named most valuable player in last year's Great Lakes Regional after scoring 33 points against Southern Indiana, and he was also named to the Elite Eight All-Tournament team. At the moment, he is a perfect 67 of 67 from the free throw line, and he is closing in on the Division II all-time record of 74. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Lynchburg, Ohio, number 33, Paul Cluxton. Escorted by Dean and Shirley Cluxton with daughter Courtney.
Our third senior is the NKU All-Time Assist King, and he will be the first player in Norse basketball history to surpass both 1,000 points and 500 assists, as he needs just four assists this afternoon to reach 500. In addition to being an outstanding passer, he is number 15 on the NKU all-time scoring list with 1,104 career points, and he ranks number three in school history with 200 three-pointers made. Last season, he hit nine three-pointers against Wisconsin Parkside, and that stood as the school record until Paul Cluxton hit 10 three-pointers earlier this year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 12, Shannon Miner. Escorted by Pete and Jenny Miner. <laughs> Our fourth and final senior is one of the most exciting players to ever wear a Northern Kentucky University uniform. He ranks number four on the NKU all-time scoring list with 1,739 career points. And he should become the school's all-time leading rebounder this afternoon as he needs just four rebounds to reach that milestone. He also is in the top 10 all-time in four other categories and he has more dunks, 153, than any basketball player in NKU history. Along with Paul Cluxton and Shannon Miner, this gentleman started the resurgence of Northern Kentucky University basketball, and his game-winning shot against Virginia Union in last season's national semifinals will always be remembered. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lexington, Kentucky, number 40, LaRon Moore, escorted by James and Nancy Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand for these outstanding seniors and their families. And now, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your public address announcer, Jay Winstall. Welcome to Regents Hall for today's game between the visiting Indiana Purdue at Fort Wayne Mastodons and your Northern Kentucky University Norse. Now introducing the starters for today's game. First for IPFW, at guard. A six-foot freshman out of Richmond, Indiana, number four, Randy Spicer. For NKU, at guard, a 5'11 sophomore out of California, Kentucky, number 22, Kevin Listerman. For IPFW, at guard, a 6'1 senior out of Elkhart, Indiana, number 50, Jeff Jackson. For NKU, at guard, a 5'11 senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio, number 12, Shannon Miner. For IPFW, at forward, a 6'2 sophomore out of Huntington, Indiana, number 23, RJ Falcone. For NKU, at forward, a 6'3 senior out of Lynchburg, Ohio, number 33, Paul Cluxton. For IPFW, at forward, a 6'6 junior out of Marion, Indiana, number 32, Kyle Kirby. 
For NKU, at forward, a 6'6 senior out of Lexington, Kentucky, number 40, LaRon Moore. For IPFW, at center, a 6'9 junior out of Connorsville, Indiana, number 40, J.B. Showalter. And for NKU, at center, a 6'7 junior out of Bradenton, Florida, number 44, Cliff Clinton. The head coach for IPFW is John Williams. The assistant coaches for NKU are Pat Ryan, Dave Beasold, Ryan Strand, and Reggie Talbert. And the head coach for the Norse in his ninth season at NKU is Ken Shields. In the region. Now we've got Tracy Purser with a happy NKU head basketball coach, Ken Shields. Tracy? Thanks, Son and John. I'm here with Coach Ken Shields. Coach, congratulations. Another win way to round out the season. Well, it really was a good way for Senior Day and Parents Day and uh, our 25th win. That gives us 75 for the last three years. And the seniors, of course, a big day. It was great to see. LaRon Moore break the all-time rebounding career record here this afternoon, and Shannon Miner break the all-time career ass uh, assist record here this afternoon. It really was. Um, let me ask you this. Speaking of the senior day, before we get into the games and stuff, you would really build a team together with Shannon, LaRon, and Paul. I mm -hmm. mean, we said earlier that those two, those three have a lot of wins under their belt. Well, you know, they're, they're again, are the uh, engine of the machine. When they came in here four years ago, it was one of the best things that ever happened to NKU. And the way that they've meshed their talents, their positives together, and have done it in an unselfish way without embitterment at any time towards each other. And then, of course, combining in, in chemistry-wise with the rest of the players, the Shaft Stevensons, the Andre McClendons, the Reggie Talberts, the Listerman brothers, all these guys, Ryan Schran, uh, it, it's really been wonderful. And now Cliff Clinton. So I, I can't say enough good things about those three young men. They are a part of history. What are you going to do as far as your road trips this weekend? <laughs> I mean, it's tough. I know this is a great win, but you have a couple of tough games ahead of you. Well, I shared with the team just momentarily ago that this is a major road trip. We go to Edwardsville, Southern Illinois University, which is in St. Louis. And, and uh, you know, it's a tough trip. I mean, they're very good. Uh, they're playing well. They played us a good game here. Then we go to uh, Southern Indiana and Evansville Saturday night. Uh, needless to say, Indianapolis is making that same trip. They're going to Southern Indiana on Thursday, finishing up at Eversville. The, long, the thing about it is, is we could go 2-0, 1-1, or 0-2. Same thing for Indianapolis. Tonight, Southern Indiana goes to Kentucky Wesley. A must win for both clubs there. A lot of big ball games, a lot of chips that still have to fall. Well, I do have one more question. We have a little bit of time left. If there was one thing that these three seniors could do for your team, that you have now, the younger ones, the sophomores, the freshmen, even the juniors, what what would it be? What would you want those kids to learn from the three that are leaving? Well, you're, you, I think uh, work habits for one thing. All three of them have had great work habits. They've really made a commitment to, to work hard in, in, in their basketball, but in their personal lives and also in, in the classroom. And, and I, I think is, uh, to put you know basketball as a high priority as far as getting better wanting to improve, wanting to mesh together. And that, of course, is a big part of our luck and our success is the chemistry that these young men have, have actually had between themselves. And we need for these three guys to lead us and help bring the other ones in as we pursue a national championship. All right, well, congratulations, Coach. Great season so far. Good luck this weekend. A lot of luck. And how's your mom? The, uh, mom's uh, doing okay. Hi to her. And also, I want to check in with Carter. Okay. Great, Coach. Go to radio. Thank I know you. you're very, very wanted. Okay, Don John, back to you. Okay, Tracy, thank you very much. NKU winning 95 to 68 in the IPFW 24 to 22. Well, it was senior day here at Northern Kentucky University and a successful one for the three graduating seniors. And here's Tracy Purser with the three seniors on this year's NKU team. Tracy?
Thanks, Don and John. I'm here with three incredible ball players. We had a lot going on tonight. Great way to end the season, guys. First of all, I want to ask you, what do you want to leave with these players? I know you have two more games, and these are really tough games that you all really have to concentrate on. Shannon, I'll start with you. When you leave in a couple of weeks after your postseason is over, what do you hope to leave with these players? I just want people to pick it up like that, like we had the last four years in that. And some people on our team, like Coach said, didn't realize what it takes to get this far, and, and we've realized it over the years and that. And uh, I think we're setting the tone for the, for the teams to come in after us, and that's what we want to do. Just set the tone for everybody else, for Kevin and Andy, and hopefully they'll set it for other people behind them. All right, Laurent, what about you? I want the team to carry on winning tradition. We had 25 straight seasons winning, and they had the pride to win and play hard. And Paul Flux, what about you? Uh, yeah, I just want them to play hard and just win 25 games a season. You know, it's it's real, it's pretty easy. We did it three out of four times, so they might as well uh, keep keep the tradition up. I think they can. This is another question that I want to ask. This is one. How about Coach Shields? You all have worked under him for the past four years. He's really, really, really helped mold you all into the basketball players that you are today. Comment on playing under him for the past four years of your basketball career. Uh, he's given us all opportunities, and that's what it takes. You know, he could have sat me down the first couple of years and not played me at all, but he got me in there, and he got Shannon in there. Laron, he's been he's been a star his all four years, but me and Shannon, we had to work our way into it, and he gave us the opportunity to do that. All right, Laron, what about you? What are your feelings I about mean, Coach Shields? He's a great coach. He gives everybody a chance. He wants everybody to play hard, and he's tired of losing. He wants to carry on a good tradition and get good players. Shannon, the emotional one, what about you? Well, he's he was emotional today. It was something I haven't seen in four years, really, him cry. You know, he's went some, through some hard things this past year with, with his father and that, and, and we've always seen him with a you know, smile on his face, and today was kind of weird because he cried a little bit. So it makes us know that he really loves us, and we know he does. All right, Rod. I really wish you all luck in the postseason. I wish you all luck in the next road games. You all go on ahead. You've got a lot of people to please, and I'm going to throw it back to Don and John. Thank you very much. I'm Tracy Purser. Okay, Tracy, thank you very much, and uh, we'll bring to a close. But it was a great game, and the fans certainly got their money's worth. Yeah, and we condensed it into a minute and 40, which wasn't easy because there were just tons of highlights. But uh, let's turn back the clock Saturday night and check out NKU in southern Indiana. A capacity crowd was on hand for the battle between the Norse and the Screaming Eagles, and it was NKU getting off to the quick start as Shannon Miner knocks down the tray. Kevin Listerman then hits one from beyond the arc to make it six love. Next, it's Miner with an NBA three as the senior was on fire. A minute later, it's Shannon with another three as the Norse jump out to a 12 to nothing lead just two minutes into the game. But the lead wouldn't last long as this basket by USI Scott Taylor as he was fouled gave the Screaming Eagles a 22 to 20 lead. With NKU down too late in the half, USI's Jeremy Pearson misses the dunk and at the other end, it's Miner hitting another three-pointer as the Norse led 45-44. USI was up 54-53 at the half. The contest was tied at 63 in the second half when Miner passes to LaRon Moore who gets the jam. Things really look good for NKU midway through the half when Andy Listerman came up with the steal and went all the way for the deuce as the Norse led at 81-70 with 9.30 remaining. However, USI once again storms back to go up two before Cliff Clinton's jam even things up at 89. But Southern storms back as Wayne Houston scores as he was fouled by Moore, who was out of the game. Southern was up 98-95 with two seconds left when Todd Clark throws a long inbound pass. The ball is tipped to Miner, who launches a three-point prayer, which goes in to even things at 98, and it was on to overtime. However, with both Moore and Clinton out of the game due to fouls, USI ruled the OT and went on to win it 116 to 111.